So we've discovered that the format or the manner in which a person's name, an individual's name is written, is crucial or critical to identifying who that person is. Yes, that's correct. Now you have some methodology or some process or procedure for what would you say, recreating, reclaiming a person's true identity? Yes. And that is the document you refer to as the live life claim? That's correct. Like I said, if you don't claim your own life, someone else will. It's as simple as that. If you don't have a claim to something, someone else will take it from you. In other words, if you've got a very cute little dog like a little Maltese poodle, and you don't have a title to it, and you don't have the, the proof of ownership to it, I will claim it from you, and I will actually get a court to give it to me, although it's your dog. You see, because we live in a commercial world where everything is on documents and on pieces of paper. So if you don't claim your poodle, and you don't get the title deeds to it, and you hold it and you own it, the dog is actually not yours as far as I'm concerned, if I want to take it. And this is what they do to all of us. It's uh, if you can't prove that you own something or that something is yours, what, what are you going to do about it? You know, somebody just took your dog. Now, are you going to once I've taken your dog, how are you going to prove that it's yours? Because so, I've now got it. And then in commerce and in law, they go with this bullshit that you know uh, ownership is, is eighty percent or ninety percent of, of of property or blah blah blah. You know, there's all sorts of things that's connotated to it in terms of commercial transactions and universal commercial codes but in reality we all know that what is yours is yours but in the world we're living in you need to be able to protect yourself and, and remove yourself out of the jurisdiction of fake authorities like corporations that they've got no authority over you whatsoever but you don't owe any document whatsoever that's got your real name on it it's an official document and that's a contract now a contract is an interesting thing because a contract means it's got to be clear, it's got to be transparent, there must be nothing hidden in it, everybody must agree about it, it must be correctly autographed, not signed, but autographed. With disclosure. Yes, with disclosure, and there must be witnesses. And then the contract is worthless if it hasn't been registered and it hasn't been recorded as a contract. And that should be the thing that you put your name on. You should have a contract drawn up that has got your name on it with witnesses, written in the correct language, in the correct grammar, and that would be your live life claim, and that would become the number for your personal private estate. So this requires more than a person simply declaring themselves yes. to be free. Yes. This requires more than a person simply self-identifying as outside the system, post-liminary, yeah. yeah. off the grid. Yes. So the live life claim creates, would you say, a paper trail when you say these things need to be recorded. There Correct. needs to be witnesses. There yes. needs to be autographs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You see, with your driver license, with your passport, with your gun license, your, your whatever license that they want to see when you're doing any transaction, you want to buy anything from a shop or get credit from a bank, they're all on documents, documents, documents. None of those things have bear any witnesses on them. It's just your signature usually that's on it, no one else's, first of all. And then secondly, the names that's put on there is not yet the name of the corporation. Your name is never written correctly on any official document. It can't be written correctly. Now, with a live life claim, what people often say is, uh, what, what, what will a correctly drawn up and correctly uh, designed live life claim do for you? It'll do absolutely nothing for you whatsoever, but how you use it, and if you really know what it is and you've done it correctly, it will be the, the, the most important document that you've ever created in your life. So you would create the document, then you would perhaps distribute it to various organizations, corporations, governments to notify them? This is the interesting thing. They will not accept it because there's no jurisdiction between the living entity and the corporation. So I will ask the court or the police or whoever, I've got a live life claim, look at it, look at it, you know, this is my private identity. They don't give a shit about my private identity. They don't want me to be private. They want me to pretend I'm a corporation or that, that you know, I'm assuming some form of standing under them, whatever. So in that sense, no, it's exactly the opposite. And there comes copyright because a lot of people don't know what copyright really is. Now, the little copyright symbol that 
this used a little circle with a little C in it. Yes. If I uh, do a beautiful piece of artwork and I claim it as copyrighted and I have it copyrighted and then I put a little C symbol on my beautiful painting, well, I've just made that crown property. That's what that little copyright symbol means. When something is copyrighted, it is not yours. And you don't own the copyright to whatever you think is copyrighted. That's the International Maritime Copyright Law. That's the Crown Corporation symbol. So we don't even know how to copyright stuff so that it's truly copyrighted. So all you need to do is you need to create it yourself and you need to write in handwriting properly using the correct grammar and the correct sentence structure. Copyright, copy claim below whatever you've done and put your autograph there and now you own the copyright because you created it yourself and you claim the copyright to yourself and now you own it and now that is your copyright. Now your, your, your autograph is the graph of your authority and nobody can do my autograph for me. Nobody but, can sign my signature for me but the signature being a simulation the autograph is the real thing. And why would I say that? Would anybody go up to Madonna or to any star out there somehow, pop star, movie star, whatever, and ask them for their signature? Hell no. You want the autograph? Yes. Wow, okay. Now why would that be? Because that's more valuable. That, that, that is a graph of their autonomy, of their authority. You don't want their signature. Governments and corporations and banks and things want signatures because it's a simulation, it's fake, it's fiction. Whereas an autograph might absolutely display more yeah. uniqueness. Yes, correct. It's absolutely unique is the beautiful part. Because again, it's got the beautiful U in the beginning, and at the end it's got another U and an E. You see, it's a combination of those vowels again. It's a beautiful word, unique. It's, it's, it's authentic, it's unique, it's, it's real. And that, that makes the big difference in there. So you may be saying that people can extricate themselves from a system or a system yes. of slavery yeah. simply they don't currently or presently know the correct no. process procedure step by step they don't know that but apart from that before you can do that you need to know what your name is and previously with previous work that Glossa Channel has done that has been explained beautifully again that you know if you don't know what your name is you lost eh? if, if, if you if a man does not know his name uh, he's truly truly lost you know, you need to know what your name is and you need to know how to use your name. Well, that, that introduces the concept of the definition of, of the idiot. Yes, correct. Yeah, that's correct. So it's important to know your name. And to know your name, we start with a funny thing uh, called sentence structure, the combination of words into a sentence and how to do it correctly. That the first thing must be first and then after that must come the second and the third and the fourth. So there's a value in how you put the, your name together. And the first bit of your name has got to be within the personal knowledge and it has got to be the first thing. So the first part of your name would obviously be your first name, your given name or your Christian name. You know, which, whichever label you want to attach to those, but that should be number one. Number two, if you've got a second name or a middle name or a third name or whatever, that's also good. And then you don't have a surname. There is no such thing. The sooner you detach yourself from the surname because that represents the debtor in the trust account and that is the sins of our fathers that we've inherited, all their debt we've inherited, all the things they've done to us and the predecessors have done to us, the scars we've built up through generations of enslavery. We almost stuck in a point where we are semi-automatically obeying authority because of the surname. And through is, force of habit. Absolutely, yeah. Because when you sign your name, it would just be your initials and then your full surname. You would never just sign your name and actually put your name in, your, in the way that you do your signature. Now, there comes the part that I will cover just now, which is called um, cursive writing. There's two ways of writing. The one is to print properly in letters independently from each other, which is how you write your autograph. The other one is to do it in cursive writing, where you join the letters in a flowing, fluid movement. Now, what flows? Well, ink does. And water. Water. You're in maritime. So, cursive writing is cursed. That's why they call it cursive writing. And it's as simple as that. So you should never, ever, ever write in cursive writing. But we've been taught how to do it in school. Which means we've, we've gone through government training of how to 
actually right, they said you must write it like this, and then all, off we go, and we all write it like this, but you cannot write in cursive, cursive is cursed. It says it in the word, why would they call it cursive writing, if it's not cursed? So yeah, that's the interesting thing. So first of all, you need to, you need to dump the surname, detach from it. You can call yourself from the clan or from the tribe, if you want family maybe, but family is related to animal husbandry and to farming, or to what is familiar to you, which is okay. A lot of people like the idea of, of the family, that's good. Of the house is pretty good, which refers to the place you came from or the house that you born into. So under common law, the house is a pretty good one to say, I'm whoever from whatever house. Like the Queen Elizabeth is from the house of Windsor. That's, that's how she writes stuff and would often express it. And the media would even say that at some point in time of, of Windsor, you know, Elizabeth of Windsor. The Duke of, you know, Canterbury. Wow, that's interesting. You see, because they, 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 they do it correctly. And that's why they did it, because they're royalty. What does royal mean? Oh, it's got a, a, a couple of vowels in there. Hey, royal means real. That's as simple as that. There's nothing royal. It's just real. But they've deceived us through writing it and making it royal and making it different from you and me because they're royal and we're not. So what they are saying in real language is that they are real and we are not. They live in reality because they know what their names are. And we got programmed not knowing what our names are.